Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the M3 Tactical Marine Raider. Uh, before we get started, I want to talk about a couple of things. According to their website, these are entirely made in-house in the United States. Uh, the only thing that they outsource is the heat treatment, which is outsourced to Peter's Heat Treat, which is widely used uh, with many uh, US-based knife companies, uh, and then also the coatings. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, the other thing that uh, I, I found out by looking through the website, I'll link this right down below so you guys can go look for yourselves. The other thing is that they offer OEM services. Um, this is cool, and I'm going to highlight this because I know that, uh, you know, something that happens a lot here currently is we have people, you know, who are just, you know, regular members of the knife community uh, coming out with their own designs. And, you know, some of them don't, they're kind of, meh, but uh, some of them are really cool. Uh, the one, you know, thing that we always see, though, is that people pretty much <laughs> exclusively use the major Chinese OEMs. And, you know, that's uh, that's fine if that's the path you want to go. Um, I'm a little bit, you know, biased towards uh, USA stuff. You guys probably know that. I, I live here, so I, I really like to see that, and that's why I'm highlighting it. Um, if you are somebody who has done designs in the past and, you know, your designs have been successful or you're somebody who is interested in doing that, you should take a look at uh, at these guys. I mean, if they're offering OEM services, that's that's pretty rare, you know. Um, I, uh, I think that's really cool that they offer that. And I, I feel like, you know, just looking at the quality of these and feeling them and getting them in hand, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with the quality. Say what you will about the design, right? That's a preference, but the actual execution here is good. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that everybody was aware of that. Uh, thanks so much to M3 Tactical for sending this in for me to take a look at. These are not mine to keep. They will go back when I am done. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. They do come in two different variations, full titanium or uh, a titanium frame lock with a carbon fiber front side. We're just going to have this one out here for the time being so we can do specs and stuff. Let's go ahead and do... Uh, <laughs> the measurements here. Overall length is coming in at, wow. Okay, so let's go to the back of the knife. I would say 9.3 inches. If you want to go all the way to the glass breaker, it is truly about 9.75 inches. Blade length is about 3.75, unless you want to measure it clear back here, in which case we're clearing four inches. The cutting edge is absolutely 3.75 inches. Big knife, right? Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. So you can see here, yes, it is in fact a large knife. How about up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3? Should have these already opened up. Uh, there you go. And then finally, let's do the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and the Benchmade Bug Outs. All right. Uh, how is the action? The action is actually really good. Now, I made a comment about these knives kind of feeling like, and, you know, I'm going to try and explain this the best way that I can. This knife feels like a ZT. Not, you know, necessarily, I know there's a lot of aesthetic elements here that are not typical of zero tolerance, right? But this makes me think of ZT from like 2014, 2015, right? I'd say anywhere from about 2012 up to about 2016, that was my favorite time period for zero tolerance knives. And uh, they've pulled away and started to do their own thing and they still make good stuff. They just don't make the stuff that I like. You know, that was the part that I really, they were some, the, the, one of the companies that really drew me into this stuff, right? Um, this feels a lot like what ZT used to be, right? It is a, a big, aggressive titanium frame lock and it has that really nice, crisp sort of break away from the detent and a really nice, satisfying bam into the open. Uh, the leverage that you're getting off of this particular knife is very good and it is very satisfying. Uh, this is made very, 
very well. And the action really makes me happy. There's some quirkiness with the design, but again, the execution of this knife is very good. And it is, as you can see, extremely smooth. Really cool. How about carry profile? Uh, up against the Spyderco Para 3, really not all that thick, a little thicker than the Para 3. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3, this is a big knife. You're going to be committing to a lot of knife in your pocket. There's no way around it, right? Including the flipper tab, it is absolutely taller in at least one area over the PM2 or Para 3, and it is absolutely longer. It's not necessarily the thickness, but just the size, the overall size and weight that you're gonna notice. Let's take a look at the inside. This is the solid titanium one. There is milling on the inside for weight reduction. Take a look at the carbon fiber one. I believe this is just a solid piece of carbon fiber, yeah. And then we have milling on the lock side for weight reduction. Let's go ahead and weigh it. I'll weigh both of them. The titanium variant weighs pretty much what I expected, 6.28 ounces. That is about the same as a Hinder XM18 uh, full tie. Uh, which is uh, only an eight and a quarter inch knife, right? The carbon fiber one, I'm gonna guess 5.75. Nope, less, 5.4 ounces. Not bad, not perfect ratios. And the balance points on the carbon fiber one, I'm gonna guess is quite a bit closer to the pivot. It's still a ways back from it though. Titanium, even further. Titanium one's about here. You're gonna notice the weight of the handle. There is more handle and it is heavier, right? I mean, it's just more material and it's longer, right? Um, but, uh, you know, not not terrible. This isn't um, in the same category as like a massively overbuilt titanium frame lock. So it's not out of the realm of normal, at least, you know, by the way that I do it. <laughs> I don't know what to say there. I don't think it's that crazy is basically what I'm saying. Let's go and do a hardware check. I'll get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. We have a T8 pivot, T8 lock bar insert screw, T8 body screws, and we have T8 pivot screws, which is really cool. There are more screws than what I would consider to be minimal hardware, but the fact that they are all at least T8 makes me happy, so I really don't have any complaints about that. Let's go ahead and measure the blade stock thickness. I'm gonna guess that that's at least 155 thousandths, perhaps 165. Let's take a look. Mm, 100 and yeah, 155 thousandths. Again, really pushing, uh, you know, that sort of ZT. That's that was ZT's. You know, 155 thousandths was like everything that they made, right? Um, so yeah, definitely. What else do we need to do here? I, I think that's pretty much it. Um, let's go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes here. This is a big old tactical looking knife, but you know, fair enough that the word tactical is in their name. It's a uh, big long tan, so I'm gonna wipe this off here real quick. This is um, their satin finish. Now, I remember another knife that they had that had kind of like a dark tumbled finish and I liked that a lot. As far as satin finishes go, this is okay. Turning it, you, you kind of see a little bit of the, uh, just the, the subtlest hint of the bronze color, which makes me think maybe it was just a little bit too hot on the belt or something. I don't know. You know, I don't I, I don't regularly do that. So that's just a guess, right? Um, I like it when it's a clean satin. Um, but I, I, I really, the reason I'm saying this, I, I really like their, if, if it's their tumbled finish, the one that was on the, the curved sort of Persian style flip, I really like that one. I like that finish a little bit better. If you don't, you know, mind this slight sort of bronze hue on this, or you like satin finishes, then fine. You know, it's gonna be more of a preference, I guess. Um, but it's a nice Tanto. In fact, this is really impressively done. We have a lot of, you know, USA production companies that are doing really, really good. Um, but something that those companies don't do quite as well as some of the ultra high-end Chinese OEMs is getting the final cutting bevel and the grinds even. Uh, we see so much of that screwed up. And labor is very, very expensive here in the United States. And it is the same for everybody. And I know people are going to say, you can get a USA-made knife for under $100. Yeah, you can get a knife that uh, I would venture to guess there's a line, like in order for it to be able to be labeled as made in the USA, it's got to be like 51%, right? <laughs> and then like literally everything else is outsourced. Um, it's that That's the reason, right? Uh, a lot of times the reason that you're seeing something that's claimed, you know, USA made, or if it's like a fixed blade where it's just much, much easier to create, right? 
The more of it that is made, that's actually made here, created here, crafted here, assembled here, the more expensive it is going to be. On top of that, the more labor intensive it is, the more expensive it's going to be. A, a folding knife is going to be more expensive than a fixed blade, right? So there's a reason. Uh, I think people are sometimes quick to jump to the conclusion that these companies are trying to rip everybody's faces off and it's just not true. It is extremely expensive to do it this way, but they're doing it. Um, we still sometimes though, even with that being the case, we still see weird little goofs, goof ups in the, the cutting bevel, right? Or the grind. And I was really happy to see that this was done well. It was done really well. It looks great on both sides. I was really happy with that. Um, on top of that, I also really like how well done the titanium is. It Nothing feels odd or weird, you know? I mean, in the beginning, I was like, are these really made in the United States? Because they're really good, you know? And it's, it's sad that we've gotten to that point where if something is too good, we automatically are like, eh, is this really made in the United States? But as far as I can tell, I haven't been there. But then again, I haven't been to where Benchmade makes knives, Spyderco, ZT, right? Hinderer, I've never visited any of those places. But, you know, a lot of times there are obvious indicators. Um, but uh, I I'm happy to report that this is really well done. And it was the same thing with their other folder. Uh, so I like that. Uh, ergonomics, you know, it's kind of a big flat, like the the um, areas right here, there's there's some nice chamfering. Uh, the titanium is is flat and we've got some some milling and stuff in here. Um, it's like holding on to a big long rectangle that has uh, cutouts for your index finger. But you know what? It's pretty comfortable and there's a lot of room to move around. This is a knife that, um, while the blade shape probably isn't the best for continuous cutting, uh, holding on to the handle for long periods of time while cutting, I would be pretty comfortable and I wouldn't be super afraid that I would drop it just because there's so much there in that carve out right here and here is enough to lock you in. So yeah, you know what? It's it's all right. You can even choke up a little bit right here if you want. Um, it kind of feels like you're choking up on a trigger there. I would still be careful. You don't want to run your finger up on the blade. But it's nice. Disengagement of the lock is also nice because they have this nice big open area here and it's been scalloped on either side. No double clutch. Easy, easy disengagement. No, no lock stick or anything like that. It's just uh, really, really nice. This was uh, created and tuned by somebody who is a knife person and really cares. Um, or at least <laughs> sort of syncs up with the things that I like. Um, I think it would have been cool to see a continuous texture pattern, but this is fine too. I mean, that's a preference. Um, but I think it would have just gone along with the look a little bit better to do like a continue, you know, like maybe a couple different zones of texture pattern, be it diagonal or diamond textured or whatever. But if they can do this, they can probably do a lot of different things. So that's cool. A little pivot collar there just to highlight uh, this sort of just decorative show side pivot. The adjustment side is over here. Um, let's see here. M3 tactical logo on the, uh, flat of the blade. This is a pretty straightforward, um, American Tanto. This is slightly compound. You can see we have flat here and a slight hollow right here. It does get reasonably thin. Um, it's not, uh, it's not thick behind the edge by any means, but it's also definitely not thin. It will cut and it will definitely puncture. I mean, these American style Tantos are absolutely, um, you know, uh, very uh, capable when it comes to puncturing, for sure. A Tanto is not the easiest thing in the world to resharpen because you'll have to adjust for the different, for, you know, when the, when the, uh, it, you've got a straight edge here and then there's an angle, right? So you're sharpening two separate edges and it tends to sort of round out this area right here. Uh, but that's fine. You know, there are definitely benefits to using a Tanto. Uh, this is M390 steel. That's very cool. Um, don't have a problem with that. I think that they could probably use a wide variety of different steels, right? MagnaCut, S45VN, LMAX, blah, blah, blah. Lots of different ones right, you know, around that area. So it comes down to preference. A um, little bit of jimping right here. Kind of reminds me of the area, you know, like with the SOCOM Elite. Um, but yeah, it, it works really well. Edges on top of the spine have been knocked down a little bit. As we transition into this swedge, it gets a little bit sharper. Not really that big of a deal. Tapers out to a pretty fine tanto point. Obviously wouldn't be prying or, you know, screwing or hammering with the tip of that knife. Um, let's see here. These are numbered. I don't know if that means that they are in a limited run. My guess is probably. 
Um, this is number 21, and this one right here is number 156. So it sounds like they made quite a few of them. You have a gigantic and probably pretty capable glass breaker slash attitude adjuster on the back of this. I do not like that the lanyard hole is positioned above the clip, but then again, the lanyard hole is not really on the knife, it's on the glass breaker. Personally, I could have done without this completely, right? And, you know, again, it's M3 tactical, and generally what is synonymous with tactical is the glass breaker. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I, I think the knife would have looked like it had a little bit better ratios if we just didn't have this here, but some people really want glass breakers. So maybe... You know, kind of split, we split the difference. Um, add a, uh, a lanyard pin back here so we don't have this gigantic hole. And then maybe shrink the glass breaker down to one little sort of, you know, they use tungsten carbide tips or something like that. That might be a little bit better, but that's just my opinion. The pocket clip. 3D milled titanium. That's kind of neat and I honestly unexpected. When we get into this territory of true USA manufacturing, I pretty much expect a stamped clip, right? Hinderer, Chris Reeve, uh, Curtis, um, Hoback knives, the ones that are made in the United States. Um, I We just see that, right? Not all companies. Some companies are definitely doing, I mean, even like Demco, right? Medford doesn't. He usually does a 3D milled clip, I think. Um, but those knives tend to be a lot more expensive. Um, so that's kind of cool. It does have a nice ramp right here. And it's nice and wide and uh, will rise to meet most thicknesses of pocket seam. Really smooth in and out of the pocket. Pretty nice. We have a steel lock bar insert that doubles as the over travel stop. So that's cool. That's what we expect. Stop pin is actually located deep in there, and there is a ton of shouldering. No blade play. Up, down, left, to right. The geometry looks good. Lockup is coming in on this guy at maybe 25%. How about this guy? Yeah, a little bit more here, maybe. Maybe 30% on this guy. But yeah, no blade play, lock rock, or anything like that. Easy disengagement. No double clutch. No pivot lash. Really cool. Very smooth, consistent action on both, and a nice detent. How's the centering? That one looks good to me. And so does this one. Um, so here's the thing. Uh, this is aesthetically going to appeal to some people and not appeal to other people. These both come in at $350. I think probably the carbon fiber one should cost a little bit less. But then again, <laughs> I, gotta be, I gotta admit, it's the same as the other folder. I'm really, really impressed with the price tag and execution here. That's the thing I want to highlight. M3 Tactical is clearly a very capable company offering OEM services in the United States. Um, I, 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 right, as of right now, my opinion of them is that they are severely underrated. They should have a lot more attention, right? If these are truly being manufactured in their own shop here in the United States with the only things being outsourced uh, being the uh, the heat treat and the coatings, right? Which I'm sure are also done. Well, Peter's, you know, USA, right? But it, that's USA, all of it. This is really, really spectacular. The design itself, I mean, it's big. You're going to have to commit to a lot of night. It's a tanto, right? Not the best for general EDC, right? This is kind of a specialized purpose folding knife, and it doesn't really fall into the category of EDC for the vast majority of people. So in that sense, I'm, I can't really say, yeah, this is a knife that's perfect for everybody. No, but anybody who does pick this up is going to be really impressed with the quality. Um... I, uh, I, I'm kind of surprised that they are able to do this right now at, at this price. Um, I, uh, yeah, it's like I said at the beginning. If you have design, if, if you're somebody who has done well with the, you know, knife designs in the past, you've always just used different OEMs or, or you've used Chinese OEMs because you don't have a shop of your own or you're somebody who's interested in doing that because you've got, you know, a design. Like if you're, if you're somebody who, you know, has like CAD and whatever. Um, yeah, I, I think that they should be, utilized. I think they should have lots of work. Um, this is pretty impressive. I have always said that, you know, 
I've got two reasons. If you've never, if you've wondered, I, I know we're kind of getting away from this knife review here, but this is a unique circumstance kind of. I've always said, you know, people say, why don't you do your own knife design? Well, number one, I'm a knife reviewer, right? So I feel like if I created a design and then, you know, sold it, I would lose a little bit of credibility with a certain, with, you know, maybe part of my audience, right? The other thing is, is, you know, I, I've got plenty of knives that are not manufactured in the United States in my own collection. But if I was going to do it, I would want to use an, a USA OEM. And, it, you know, um, up until I read that on M3 Tactical's website, I didn't feel like I really had any choices. You know, there are USA knife manufacturers, but they're pretty loaded up with their own stuff. And if they do other people's designs, it's kind of like they're a ways out and there's other people in line for contracts. And also the main thing is, is I would imagine, I, generally speaking, that it would be wildly expensive to do something that I'd like to do. I'm not sitting here saying that I'm absolutely going to do something or talk with them about it, but it, you know, it's nice to know that they do that. Um, really, uh, I, I think this is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I think this is great. If you like this knife, if you like how this looks, right? Maybe you're big into like, you know, big long folding tantos. This feels a lot like a ZT that's got a little bit of extra polish in it. A little bit of, a little bit more spirit, a little bit more magic elbow grease, elbow grease in it. Um, and it kind of, <laughs> I'm kind of hoping that M3 kind of fills that void because nobody, at least from my perspective, has stepped up to fill the void that was left when ZT, you know, shifted gears and changed courses. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I'm, I'm rooting for M3 here. Um, definitely. Uh, I think if you pick this knife up, you're going to be very happy with it. Um, so I don't know. I, I <laughs> feel like I should trying to think of other ways that I can highlight them. You know, you expect to hear more from me about M3 in the future. Absolutely. I think that's going to be pretty much it today. Thanks again to M3 for sending these in. These were, along with your other folding knife, uh, a real eye opener, right? A good, a positive one. Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.